friends and fellow artists, Miss Katie here and Josephine. For today's lesson, we're going to be doing some drawing of bunnies. And then I'm going to show you how to paint them. So let's go ahead and look at the supplies we need to do this lesson. Here are the supplies that you will need to create your bunny painting. Watercolor paper, scrappy paper for practicing, soft synthetic watercolor brushes if you have them, some watercolors, a cup of water to wash your brushes in, paper towel, and of course pencil and eraser. All right, let's get started. Before you start drawing on your watercolor paper, I want you to practice drawing some bunnies on a piece of scrappy paper. We're going to draw them in simple shapes that connect together. So for the body, you might start with a round, roundish oval. The head might be another round shape. then you can kind of connect them together to create one bunny shape. For the ears, two long curved lines. And here is the most simple, quickest way to get a basic bunny drawn. Of course, don't forget his tail. Now, from this position, you can decide if you want to give him standing legs or sitting legs. For sitting legs, all you need to do is draw a curved line across the body like so, and then a little loopy leg that comes back around and connects the body. For a front leg, one curved line up in front that maybe comes back around over the body. The reason I'm always telling you guys to draw lightly is because you'll need to go back in and erase some lines. You'll need to erase where the body cuts across the leg here and also right here across this leg and as well as back here on the face. So that's one way to draw a bunny. What are some other ways you can draw a bunny? Well, what about kind of a front on position? So we can draw a circle for its head and then an oval for its body. This will be a little bit like we drew our cat. A long looped leg like so, and then a loop out like that. And this time, instead of drawing cat ears, we're going to draw tall or maybe even flopped over bunny ears. If you want to make them flopped over, draw a bit of a half ear and then the point needs to come down like so. It's going to cross over and then you'll erase so the flop is on the outside. For his front legs, we're just going to draw two little bunny legs and of course erasing the body from the front of the legs. Now we have the basic shape, we can practice drawing a bunny's face. Like we did on our cat drawings, we can mark the middle of the face with construction lines to help us know where to place the eyes. Remember, the eyes go in the middle of the head. And if you want to make your bunny look even cuter, 
you can set the eyes a little bit extra low. So for the eyes, you can do two rainbows, an almost circle, and then a smile line. Two rainbows, an almost circle, and then a smile line. A bunny nose is like a cat's nose. A straight line with a V, which is also known as an upside down triangle. To make the bunny smile for his mouth, you can do a little straight line down and then two little curved lines. If you want to bring them all the way back around like so, you can kind of draw in his little bunny muzzle. And then a little mouth down here. Maybe your bunny has a different expression though. You can put in a little bit of the inside of the ear you'd like for fun, which we may color a different color. On this bunny, if you would like to draw the other leg, it might be sticking over here. You don't have to though, it could be hiding behind his front leg. All right, now that we have the basic practice down of our bunnies, let's move over to our watercolor paper and put our bunnies in place. Before you start making marks on your paper, I want you to envision with your imagination where you want to draw the bunnies on your paper. Be sure to draw as lightly as you can so that you can erase if you need to. And try to draw a little bit big so you don't end up with teensy weensy little pixie size bunnies. Okay, I want you guys to notice that I didn't do a lot of erasing during this time. I left my lines a little sketchy so that I could decide later what lines I wanted to keep and not have to worry about erasing, erasing, erasing. So once you have all of your pencil lines drawn very lightly, I want you to please use a Sharpie. And I'm sorry if I did not show that in the supplies you need. And trace all of your lines in black marker. If you do not have a Sharpie to trace your lines, don't worry about it. Just get a lot of the pencil lines off of your paper and you're just gonna paint right over it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and line this and I will show you guys how to paint it here in a minute. Okay, I'm just finishing up the last of my lines. Now, if you want something to be black and it's small, say the pupils of your bunny's eye, you could go ahead and color those in now with your with your black sharpie but everything else we can wait and paint once you're all finished with the black sharpie though we need to erase all of the pencil off of here something else i kind of forgot to point out to you guys earlier is notice that i did not draw my bunnies to the very end of the paper I left a little bit of space around all of my paper. Make sure you do that. 
if you draw too close to the bottom, it brings the viewer's eye too far down and it makes your bunnies look like they're gonna fall off the page. So I'm gonna get this erased and then we're gonna do some painting. I have my bunnies all traced and their eyes have black in the middle of them. The only other thing that you could do at this point is figure out where are your bunnies? Are they out in the grass somewhere? If so, you might wanna put a horizon line. A horizon line is where the earth and the sky meet. So a good place to put your horizon line is going to be about a third of the way up. But you also wanna be careful that you don't wanna cut anybody's ears right through or anybody's head right through with your horizon line. So it might be a line that curves. It might be a line that is straight. It might be more than one line. It might be a few different hills. And you can play around with some different lines and figure out what, how you want your bunnies to be positioned. I think this one, this one's a little tricky, but yeah, I think I'll leave that one. So you can draw these lines with your black marker or leave them in pencil if you're not doing black marker. And then we have some painting to do. I'm going to show you a couple of little hacks I like to use just to make my painting experience a little bit better. One, have you ever had your painting, watercolor painting, curl up on you when your paper gets too wet? Well, it happens. So if you can and you have masking tape, you can tape down your painting and it will not move around on you so much. You can use washi tape too if you have that. The other thing I like to do is any eraser dust, or in my case, I have a lot of cat hairs that like to get all over my painting. So I like to take one of these little roller thingies, you might have one of those, and kind of go over my painting one more time before I start painting. So. Before we begin, let's look at our palette. I have a basic set of, well, it's actually a double set of watercolors here, but for today's lesson, I'm gonna just be using the basic set because some of you may just have that. So I'm gonna show you how to mix some colors. This is where we're gonna be mixing colors. Now, if your tray is a little dirty from mixing before, just get it a little bit wet with your brush and then you can wipe it out clean it up a little bit before you get started. Watercolor, you have to be very careful about what things to paint in what order. Otherwise, your whole painting will blur together. So let's start in the background for this. And let's get some water in our, in a big well here. And let's find a color for the sky. I'm gonna grab out quite a bit of water because it's quite a big space to paint. I'm going to start with some blue. So your brush always needs to be wet when you're painting with watercolor. And I'm going to pull out some blue here and bring it to this puddle. We do not know what color this will be until we start painting it on our painting. But instead of painting it on our painting first, let's go ahead and test it on some watercolor tester paper. All right, let's test out this color and see how it looks for our sky. That looks pretty good. So when you're painting, if you can choose a bigger brush to paint big things, that's gonna be great. I'm gonna start in one corner and paint quickly. And I'm not going to stop until all of my background is painted. Because 
as you may know, if you stop painting and then come back to it, you're going to have some hard water lines. So as you can see, this brush I chose is a big brush with a very small point that's going to allow me to get in to these little cracks like this. and also paint the big sky that I have to work with. Whoops, I got a little on the ear, and that's why I want you guys to have paper towels with you if you can, or an old rag, and you can take your paper towel and just dab it up like this, and it'll pick up a lot of that color. And I have a cat hair, of course. Kitty Joe loves to paint with me. So once you've gone over one section, don't go back and paint it again. I wouldn't want to come over and repaint this. You don't want to disturb the first layer. Paint it once, and then if you would like to go back over it again later, you can do that. But you really just want to wait for that first layer to dry. Now I'm going to show you another hack, and that's to make clouds by lifting. So take your paper towel or your rag, whatever it is you have, and you can go ahead and kind of change the direction and changing the shape of what you're pulling up, but you can lift out some clouds. So let's try another one over here. I'm just making like a little wad, just a little wad of paper towels, and I'm going to... I don't want to print the same place every time. I don't want to keep doing this every time. I'm going to kind of change the shape of it. Turn it and twist it. Make a fluffy cloud there. And maybe one more back here. Maybe one kind of coming off the page. And there you have it, some fluffy clouds. So the next thing I wanna paint will not be my bunnies and it will not be this hill or this hill because these are touching the sky. And as you may remember, if you're painting and then you go to paint another thing next door, your colors will bleed into one another. So we want to skip and hop around our painting just like a little bunny and find a new place to paint. So this hill right here would be a great place to paint next. I'm going to grab some clean water. And I'm going to mix up another green. This time, let's try to make an earthier green. Let's test out this green and see what it looks like. Looks like light green. How can I make this a little earthier? A little more grass-like. Hmm. How about some brown? Let's see what happens if I add a little bit of brown to tone it down a bit. Ooh, that's a much nicer green. However, I think I would like it to be just a little bit darker with my first green. Remember, test out your colors. Ah, that looks about right. So once again, I'm gonna paint paint around. Start in one spot and work your way around. I have the top and the bottom half of my painting finished there are a couple other spots I see that I could paint for now and the rest of it will have to wait until it's dry can you guess where those spots are yep you got it the eyes and the inside of the ears so 
I want to make the inside of the ears pink, but I don't have pink on my palette. Hmm, what should I do? You can take red and just add a lot of water to it. And that should give you a pretty good pink. As you can see, I've switched my brush to be an even smaller pointier brush. A watercolor brush should be soft. And really, all you usually need is a round brush like this. Round means that if you look down the center of it, it is round. My bunnies will have different color of eyes. Do you notice that I am leaving part of the eye, just a little spot of it white? So that the eyes will look shiny at the end. This little baby's gonna get some of his eye color from his mom and some from his dad. I'm using a pretty big brush to paint those noses, but it has a very small tip on it so I can get into very small places. All right, now we need to wait for this to dry completely before I can paint anything else so that our colors do not blur together. All right, now we need to look at our painting and figure out where can we paint so that nothing is wet next to it. I see that I can paint one of these hills, but I won't be able to paint the other one for a minute. So let's go ahead and paint the second farthest hill back and I'm going to go ahead and keep the same green that I had but I'm going to just change it up a little bit. In a landscape when you look at a landscape photograph or a picture or even look at the landscape it actually gets lighter the farther you get back. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to my already green and maybe a little yellow too just to change the color a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and paint this hill here. And after that, I'm going to paint this bunny right here. Now, let's say you want to paint your bunny brown. Well, if I paint brown from here, let's see. That bunny is going to be very dark. And my paint's a little bit too saturated with pigment. So I'm going to take this brown and I'm going to add it to a clean place in my palette. And then I just want to tone it down with a little bit of water until it looks like a better brown. Now, if you wanted to make this bunny even lighter, you just keep adding water to it. Maybe it's not quite the right shade of brown. Well, try adding another color, say yellow or orange. You'll be able to change the shade of brown you have. Let's try this color out. Yeah, that looks like a good brown. I'm gonna start at the 
bottom this time. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paint my whole bunny, unless he's a multiple colored bunny, then you'll want to paint around. Try to be careful and get them painted one time quickly and to try to not go back over where you've already painted. This is how you're gonna get nice even paint. Next I'm going to paint my baby bunny. I think this little bunny I will do gray. How do you make gray? Well, you're gonna add water like we've been doing with just the titchiest touch ever. Teensy bit of black. Let's see how that looks. Don't forget to test your colors. That looks about right. Make sure that everything's dry around your bunnies before you start painting. All right, now what if you want to make your bunny white? Should we just leave it white? Well, we could, but let me show you what we can do to our white bunnies to make them look even better. First of all, as you can see, I was a little bit in a hurry and I got a little extra paint from the hills and the sky on my bunny. So first thing I'm gonna do is have some clean, clean water and I'm going to paint a little bit of water on those spots that I don't want there to be anymore. And then I'm going to do some lifting like that. Do you see how that just cleaned that bunny right up? This will only work if your surrounding area is dry. If your hills are still wet, this will not work. This will make it worse. We're just gonna give this little bunny a bath. Make sure you use a clean part of your towel when doing this. That's a bit cleaner. Now to shade our bunny, shading is where you make um, shadows to make your bunny look like it's a little bit more three dimensional. We're gonna take some gray, it could be a grayish blue or a little bit of this gray that I use for the bunny, my baby bunny. And I'm gonna paint a little bit around the edges and all of the places on my bunny that are farthest away. So this foot here is the back foot. And I'm gonna actually just kind of paint that a very, very light gray. This part of his belly, I'm gonna paint this just a little bit on the edge with a gray under his chin. behind his tail on the edges a little bit. Maybe even a little bit on his face. Now I see this hill is a little wet, so you're gonna to wanna to be really careful if you have any surrounding areas that are wet. Around his head a little bit. There's where my hill was wet. Can you clean that up some? Our white bunny looks a little bit more lively. And when you are all finished with your other bunnies, when they're dry, you can shade on them a little bit too. I'm gonna leave this baby's tail white, I think. All right, let's let this dry and then finish painting it up. And then we're gonna put some little clovers all over the front hill. Now we're gonna do our brown bunny. 
Mix up some darker brown, test it out. I'm going to be really careful around where these hills are. Now, as you can see, my paintbrush isn't super duper wet for this part because I want to be able to control my paint a little bit better. I don't want it very, very wet. I want it a little bit drier. Do you see how this one ear kind of got light because I had... Um, my paintbrush was just too dry or too wet at one point. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this ear again right now. This would be a good time to do that. I'm gonna stop right there though. Now for the last thing we wanna do is put a little texture on this. Let's add some clovers in the front field. We can do that with our paintbrush. I'm gonna show you. How you can do that you're going to want to make now a different green something probably much darker than what you have down so it will show up just mixing some green and some brown together and this i would suggest testing out first before you commit to doing it on your hill we're going to make some little three leaf or four leaf clover clovers by making a pointy end pointy end with our brush and then making it round at the other side pointy end, and you can kind of connect them together like this okay we can make a lucky four leaf clover too so you could also try to turn your brush like this and try to get texture this way. You'll have to turn your paper though, probably. So play around with it. See how you can make some nice clovers. I'm gonna do a couple on my painting and then I'm gonna show you another way you can do it also. All right, now you could keep doing this all over your painting. It might take a little while, but it'll sure look great. The other thing you could do is you could take a marker, either water-based or alcohol-based, either one, and you could draw them on afterwards with marker. When your bunnies are all dry, you can take the tape off of the edges and then sign your name down at the bottom. I hope you had as much fun painting bunnies as I did, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of your bunnies at our next class. Until then, take care. Happy painting.